So hi, uh, my name's Emma. I'm a first year medical student at Warwick University. So before coming here, I had a myriad of jobs. Um, I was a PA, um, I was a consultant for the Malaysian Sovereign Wealth Fund. Um, I was an HR manager, I was an office manager, but I could never really settle because I knew I always wanted to do medicine. So at 25, I gave it all up. I moved back home and did an access course. Um, and then I got into UCL to do applied medical sciences um, and now I'm here. So it's been a long journey but finally managing to do it. So how old are you now starting medical school? Uh, 29. Well actually I was 28 when I started, but I'm 29 now. So you did medical sciences, have you found it to be useful in medical school? Um, I think it's been useful because it prepared me for the type of knowledge that I was going to have to learn, so kind of scientific knowledge. Um, and obviously a lot of the things that I did in my undergrad we've done here, but um, I wouldn't say that it's kind of given me a, an advantage against other students, which is weird because at the beginning I thought that I would, um, but it doesn't because it's just a completely different way of learning here. Um, and uh, so it was, it's helpful to have gone over some of the concepts before, especially for someone like me, because I'm dyslexic and it takes a while for it to sink in sometimes. But um, yeah, I would say we're all on an even, even playing field. Have you found that your dyslexia actively makes things more difficult for you? Um, it does make things difficult um, because, because obviously it's a um, accelerated course. There's a lot of content to remember. One of the things with dyslexia is that it's really difficult to retain things in your short memory. Um, and also kind of one of the things that I suffer with is word recall. And in medicine, there are so many new words that you have to learn that are like Harry, Spot Harry, uh, Harry Potter spells. Um, and for me, I have to come up with like weird, weird like mnemonics or like cartoons in my head of how to remember things. So some people just think I'm crazy because I go to all this effort of remembering these weird mnemonics and cartoons, but uh, it works for me. Um, so but you, what's your favorite one? My favourite one, um, oh god you put me on the spot now. So for instance there's like a mutation of gene called the BTK gene and I think of Ben the killer. So like just, just weird things, so things like that. Do you find that you have to study differently even having done med sci? Um, yes, so I have, I, I'm a very visual learner. So some people can just read books and understand what uh, the, the message they're trying to get across and they'll just remember they'll have like they'll read a word and then they'll be able just to recite it back whereas I have to learn through like YouTube videos or the the, the 3D anatomy um, app that we use and that really helps and it's not something that I had to do in my undergrad I was quite fortunate that I just kind of get the concepts whereas here you just you can't rely on that there is so much content so um, yeah, a lot of visual learning and that really helps me because then I think back to like the pictures and the videos and that triggers my memory as opposed to like I won't remember something that I've just read in a book. So what has your experience of these other jobs given you when changing careers like this? Um, I suppose it's taught me to work in a team because obviously having gone, because I'm, I'm, I'm older, I've gone from kind of being at the bottom and worked my way up to managerial roles. Um, and I've worked in a team and I know how to manage people, but actually sometimes that can be a little bit, uh, not detrimental, but it can be hard for me because obviously I'm used to being in charge and now I'm back at the bottom again. Um, and especially being older, it can be quite difficult working with people that are younger and you're on the same kind of playing field. So I suppose it, coming to med school's kind of taught me how to probably speak to people in a better way and be calmer, um, which I think obviously is applicable to patients, you know, so yeah. What's been the most challenging thing about coming to med school? Um, I think there are probably two, two of the, the hardest challenges, probably one, obviously like medical school is not easy, so l trying to learn everything, because there is, there is a lot, that, that's a big shock to the system, um, and the second is probably I'm kind of leaving my life in London and my friends and moving to Coventry, um, which I don't live in Coventry now <laughs> anymore. Um, and having to 
uh, spend all your time with all these new people that you know some you get on with some you don't and you know medics are quite strong characters so all of us put together was quite interesting at the beginning but now that time's passed and we're all kind of focusing on that goal um, it's it's working a lot better. So one thing that wasn't uh, not something that I just noticed, but um, happened to other people, and I think happens quite a lot at medical schools, especially graduate, because we're kind of older and we're putting this weird situation where we've all left our lives and feel a little bit anxious and everything's new. Um, and there were quite a lot of rumours going on around about myself and other people, just things that weren't true and silly. And kind of in retrospect, uh, now I look at what happened, I think it's because people were in a new situation and I'm um, probably feeling a bit vulnerable and I was I was quite loud because I'd already, already organised social events so quite a lot of people knew me already um, and kind of became the target of rumours which uh, you know I'm almost approaching 30 so you think why would I be bothered about these silly rumours at school you know med school I wouldn't care but it, it really hurt me to the extent where I thought you know I wanted to leave um, and then you really question yourself because obviously, you know, for me, I've given up my job. I've spent the last six years trying to get into medicine and to within the first two months think I want to leave was just really kind of like questioning me and my personality and who I am. So it was it was really difficult. Um, but I mean, it wasn't unique to me as well. I know it's happened to other students and, and even the teachers. Um, and I think it's really important to remember to be professional when you're in this environment because um, it is a bit like going back to university and you you know like oh I'm 18 again and you go out clubbing and stuff it's fun but you know we're here to be doctors and I think some people sometimes forgot that um, but now um, I think people well actually people realized what they were doing um, and stopped it and made me feel a lot more welcome um, and I think we're more kind of united now I don't really hear any gossip or rumours, it's more that we're kind of there for each other, so I think it's improved certainly in our year. What's been your favourite part of the course so far? Um, my favourite part of the course, oh god, uh, probably, um, well it was actually a moment um, and it was when we started bedside teaching and I have a consultant who is really cutthroat, she's like my idol, she's gorgeous, she's like the boss of everyone it's Miss Ward yeah <laughs> she's great and so um, she just sent me off on my own to go and uh, take a history from a patient just like, completely unsupervised and I was walking down the corridors of the hospital with my stethoscope around my neck and I was like oh my god I'm actually doing it like this is real um, and it was really funny actually because I went to the patient and I said you're my first patient and I thought he'd be really excited but he looked at me in complete terror <laughs> he's absolutely horrified um, but it was fine obviously I don't have to do anything um, so uh, yeah that was probably the best moment for me but in terms of what I've enjoyed um, I, I mean, it's a bit of a love-hate relationship because I really struggle with anatomy, but I also really love how it's taught here. It's really well taught. Um, and, um, yeah. Can you talk how, about how it is taught? Yeah, so, um, so I was quite lucky that in my undergraduate, I got um, to do a few post-mortems um, and work with live tissue. Um, and. It was useful, but because I didn't really have the knowledge, and I, I couldn't really apply it to what I was seeing. So the teaching is just amazing. So Professor Tunstall and Dr. Fillmore are, are just amazing teachers. They they teach anatomy in a way to make it interesting. They apply it to clinical um, cases. So you're not just learning the names of things, which is great. Um, and then we have the uh, plastinates, um, which are the uh, cadaveric tissue that's been kind of covered in plastic and set which uh, I actually wasn't very keen because I'd had I'd used uh, soft uh, fresh tissue before I really wanted to carry on doing that but then now we use the plastic you can see like really um, what's the word really um, like small things that you wouldn't yeah fine detail things that you read about in books and it's really difficult to kind of visualize them and then you see them and that, that's that's really helpful um and all the teaching staff you know when we have our anatomy days are 
really engaging and, and want to be there, which is nice. So uh, yeah, love-hate relationship with anatomy because it's hard, but it's interesting. Do you have any future career plans or interests? Um, so I just, I want to do everything. So it's a little bit difficult for me. <laughs> Every time I go to see a patient, I, I can imagine myself being on the ward. So I'll definitely know I'm in the right place. Um, I thought I wanted to be a surgeon. Um, and now I don't think I want to be a surgeon because I spent a day, um, a surgical day amputating a cad uh, cadaver's legs and doing a clamshell thoracotomy and um, lots of kind of interesting things but it made me realise that it's just not where my, my heart is. I want to be with patients and talking to them and helping them. Um, I really like kids so before coming here we um, we'd have to do volunteering and things like that. So I volunteered with kids having chemotherapy in London um, and I didn't enjoy it, uh, but I, I liked working with the children and with the, with the parents. So I could see myself in paediatrics, but um, I have a background in kind of venture capital and investment and I, I'm also interested in that. So kind of applying medicine to tech. Um, I'm really interested in VR um, and teaching with VR. So um, that's something I'd be interested in as well. I don't think I'll always just be a doctor. I have to have my hands in many pies. And how would you manage the NHS? Oh my God. I mean, let's try to put this in careers. I mean, if I, I when I came to med school, I told my mum that the next thing on the list was to become health secretary um, because it's, it's really difficult to see such a beautiful thing run poorly. Um, and, sorry. Um, and having come from a very kind of structured background, obviously everyone thinks that they could go in there and change things. So there's a reason why it is the way it is but um, I would definitely run the NHS differently. I would try to improve communication between um, all different teams, because I think that's where the ultimate kind of faults lie, is the lack of communication. So thank you for watching. Um, I'm happy to take any questions if you have any. My email will be on the screen. Um, and good luck to you, and hopefully see you in September.